What's going on guys? We're having a great day today. Today we're going to be in the book of Proverbs. We're going to chapter 23 verse 1 through verse 8. And in this past week I just went on one of my first business trips. And, and as I was on that business trip, this passage began to come into my mind very often. Um, because when you're out with people who, who are high status, who have a lot of money, who are affluent in life, certain temptations draw in. And they can be very dangerous. They can be very damaging. And so while I was out there with these people and, and eating good food with these people, this verse continually popped into my mind to help guard my soul from desiring these these things. And, and before I even start, I want to mention that it's not necessarily a sin to have things, of course. But it's the, the wicked and carnal desire to have more and more of these lavish delicacies that can be very dangerous to a Christian. They're very dangerous to the lost world because the lost world is consumed by it. But they're also very dangerous to a, a Christian because it can draw you into temptation and cause you to sin. And so if we go to Proverbs chapter 23, verse 1 through verse 8, the Bible says this, When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel of which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up, and lose thy sweet words. So if we look at verse 1 and verse 2, it says, When thou sittest thee with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given, to appetite. So the, the author here is just pointing out very clearly, when you sit with people who have high status, you know, high wealth, high notoriety, be diligent. Consider diligent what is before thee. Put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given to appetite. It shows the seriousness of it. The seriousness of, of really guarding yourself. The seriousness that, that you don't want to become or fall into the trap of desiring the things of the world. Desiring the things that are carnal and and flesh full, the things that desire, or excuse me, that, that satisfy the flesh. Now, of course, I'm not talking about hunger and, and thirst. We should do these things, right? But the, the sinful things that satisfy the flesh. The Bible here is very clear that we should be diligent and we could, should consider these things and guard ourselves from these things. If you look at verse 3, be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. And the word dainties just means delicacies, right? And the context here is talking about food. But I really do think it's really in a broader scheme, a more wise, overarching theme of just don't be desirous of the of the lavish things of this world that are not profitable, that lead to, to envy and covetousness, that lead to a man's destruction because of his desire to have more. And so really what I was learning is that it is kind of a, a struggle on the soul when you go out to certain areas with certain people because it draws you away from God. And it draws you into the world. And that's what I really do believe it means that it's deceitful. Right? These things of the world, they draw you, but they do not provide for you. At least long term, right? They entice you, yet they don't satisfy you. They seem good, but they lead to death. Because it, as, a, as the things of this world draw you closer to itself and further from God, it leads to spiritual decline. It leads to reliance upon the things of the world and not of God, which ultimately leads to our demise, our destruction. Maybe not even spiritually. If we're Christians and we're saved and we're just backsliding and we die in that backslide state, I do believe we're still saved, of course. But it's not good for the soul and it leads to separation from God, at least here and now. And it says they, they deceive because they're not secure. right? The things of this world are not secure. The things of this world are constantly fleeting. And as I was reading some commentaries, I came upon a quote from Matthew Henry. And I thought this quote beautifully summed up really what verse 3 is all about. He says, The more luxurious appetite is humored and indulged, the more humorsome and troublesome it grows, and the more hard to please. You see, because people just want more and more. They get what they want, they get what they desire, and yet it's not enough. It doesn't satisfy, it doesn't secure. And he continues, Dainties will suffice, but never satisfy. But especially they are upon this account deceitful meat, that while they please the body, they prejudice the soul, they overcharge the heart, and unfit it for the service of God. Nay, they take away the heart and alienate the mind from the spiritual delights and spoil its relish of them. Why then should we covet that which will certainly cheat us? 
You see, these things of this world, they draw you away from God and they make you unfit for the service of God because your mind is on the earth. It's upon the physical things and not on the spiritual things. It's not, as I like to quote this book, it's not fit in light of eternity. Right? If we're not focusing on, on God's kingdom, on God's will, on the spiritual things that actually matter to a man's soul, then we're unfit for the service of God. And these, these physical delights detract from our delight in the spiritual things of growing in a greater love for God, a greater honor of God, and a greater worship of God. And in verse 4, Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. And see, it's interesting to know here that the, or the proverb, author of the Proverbs constantly is saying, or pointing out the dangers of being a slothful man. And he's constantly saying to work diligently. But here he gives a great reminder, a great caution, that labor not to be rich. So we should work hard. We should work for our money, right? We should do. We should not be lazy people. We should be people who are willing to work for the glory of God. But it should not be in the desire of being rich. It should not be in the fleshly, carnal lust of having more and more. It should not be in the, the sinfulness of greed. But it should be in, in to bring honor and glory to God. And we should give because God has given all that we have. We should give to others as well. We should not be harboring labor or, or, or greed and money in our heart. We should be working hard, but not working to be rich, not laboring in vain to receive all that we can possibly receive in this world. And it also in verse 4 it says, Cease from thine own wisdom. See, the, the worldly wisdom, the wisdom of man, thinks that we should ought to store up wealth for ourselves, that we may be secure, that we may be protected. And there is some wisdom in there, no doubt. We should not be careless with our money. But ultimately, we should be trusting in God and not our riches. We should be trusting in the God who, who provides, and not in the bank account, which we might think provides, but it's ultimately God who brings forth all that we need, and who provides all for his children. And if we go to verse 5, Would thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. You see, the moment that we begin to, to put our mind on the riches of this world, the moment we begin to secure ourselves in these things and not God, they fly away and we're left with nothing. You see, riches in this life profit very little. And, and, and God can certainly use riches for his glory. He can use people who have wealth to bring him praise, no doubt. But when we start trusting in our wealth, when we start relying upon these things and, and resting ourselves in the riches of this life and not in God, that's when they fly away and we are left with nothing because ultimately we came from nothing and we will go to the grave with nothing. So if we do not trust in God, trust in Christ, we have absolutely nothing in this world to hold us secure. And in verse 6 and verse 8, Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Neither desire thou his dainty meats, for he thinketh, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten shall thou vomit up, and lose thy sweet words. So here's really talking about a man who is deceitful. Not only are his meats deceitful, but he himself is deceitful. He does not look after the good of his brother. He offers him to eat at the table, but it's out of a malicious intent and not out of goodness and joy and, and, and righteousness, but out of deceitfulness. But also we see this part where there's a great tribe, right? The one who desires to be like the wicked man who has the world is in great danger. The moment you desire to be like the people of this world and have the things of this world and not the things of God, you're in danger. Do not fall for the trap. The trap is laid, but avoid it. Flee from such temptation, for it may seem good, yet it will corrupt. It may seem profitable, but it will bring great misery. You see, while I was on this trip, I really found out that in, in the carnal fleshly desire, it feels good to be with people like this. But it took a very spiritual toll. And so I would much rather be with a group of Christians, believers, who love God and have absolutely nothing else but God than to be with the rich people who have all this world and have not God. Because while it might feel good to the flesh to have the things of this world, it kills the soul. So it would do us all good to take heed to this passage in Proverbs and put a knife to our throat in the sense of being diligent, of being consistent, of watching where we might fall into sin and flee from it and run to God and be secure in God. Let our hope be in God alone and not the things of this world. And this all starts with having a right relationship with God, which only comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Because whether we'd like to, to admit it or not, we've all fallen into the same trap where we desire the world and we've sinned against God. And we've rebelled against God. We've rejected God with our actions, with our thoughts, and even with our words. And because of that, we are separated from God. But that God loved us enough to send His only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Christ came to this earth. He put on flesh. He became a man. He lived a perfect, sinless, holy, good life, one that we can never live, and that He went to the cross. In His sinless perfection, He took upon Himself the sins of the world. That is your sin and my sin. And with our sins upon the Lord Jesus Christ, He took upon Himself the wrath of God that we deserve. And He died upon that cross. He was buried. But on the third day, He rose again, proving that He is God, and that we said is true. And He offers all men the free, sal- free gift of salvation. All you must do is repent of your sins, turn from your wickedness, and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not trusting in goodness, it's not trusting in your own works, or your own acts of righteousness, or your own keeping of religious duties, but it's trusting in Jesus Christ, His work upon the cross, His work of salvation. Believe upon Him today and be saved. And out of that belief in Christ, you will grow in a greater desire for Him and not the things of this world. Yes, there will be temptations, there will be trials, and and there will be difficulties. But we must die to ourselves, trust in Christ, live for Him, and bring Him glory. And our soul's delight will rest in Christ and not the things of this world. Ours and you are not alone. Jesus loves you. I love you. Have a blessed rest of your day.